Well, how are you doing? Okay, <clears throat> this is going to be a video about the angle of elevation, and uh, there will be some other nuggets of awesomeness in here too. Um, <clears throat> because within the uh, flat versus globe arena, uh, when it comes to celestial navigation and celestial angles, um, our opposition don't want to accept that these angles are always right angle triangles, because that's what an angle of elevation is. Both an angle of elevation and an angle of depression are right angle triangles. But our opposition don't want to accept this because they want to be able to create a tangent plane, which would be you know, on off of their globe, and then make an angle off of that. that would, an angle would just be two straight lines meeting at a vertex. <clears throat> and then move this angle to their equatorial plane. right? But then after they move it to their equatorial plane, they're not talking about what they're doing after that. They're just trying to claim at that point they're just measuring an arc length right now <clears throat> they don't have an uh, they don't have a horizontal or a vertical to begin with because you can't determine there is no reference for horizontal or vertical uh, or on the surface of the globe right so whatever they may call a horizontal or vertical they have no reference for it within that mathematical paradigm so it's not possible to call any of these uh, tangent planes um, a horizontal uh, because they'll all, each each point along that surface of that globe will be another tangent plane that will be at a different angle to the last uh, tangent plane and the next tangent plane. So you can't even determine the degrees of angle because you don't even have a horizontal to reference to because you don't have horizontal. That's the problem. So if you don't have horizontal, you certainly don't have a vertical because all your verticals, or what they call a vertical, it will be meeting at the center of their globe. So that would be a diverging uh, zenith, which uh, is impossible uh, because you don't. You need, all verticals must be parallel to each other. All horizontals must be parallel to each other, and all all zeniths are verticals. You know, so and all, every every point they meet will be to make a perpendicular will be a horizontal. So you can't have any of those things on the surface of a globe. But all that aside, we've gone through that in the past, and we will again in the future. <clears throat> all that aside. They want to claim that they're taking an angle, which is just two straight lines meeting at a vertex, right, of a tangent plane to a celestial body, and then moving it to their equatorial plane of their globe, right? Now that's incorrect because that is not in line with uh, that is not in line, first of all, mathematically with what with the angle they're claiming to take, which is an angle of elevation to a celestial body, because an angle of elevation is always a right angle triangle. Right, it always is. It's not just an angle. I, I, it's not just an angle. You can have different angles, right? Uh, that you can use for different different things. But when it comes to an angle of elevation and an angle of depression, they are always angles. Uh, they are always sorry, right angle triangles. Okay, here is Khan Academy. <clears throat> so here is you, the object, and the line, right? You, line of sight, object, horizontal. As you'll see, the horizontal line extends all the way to beneath the object. So this angle that they're claiming to take off a tangent plane, their tangent plane must extend directly below the celestial body. It must extend that far, right? Because that's right, even if they're trying to claim a tangent plane, it must extend that far. So no matter what, right? And they deny this, but I'm going to show how how them denying this is denying another massive facet of their heliocentric model, right? And how they deny it in this instance, in this instance, because it doesn't suit their narrative, yet they use it straight after that, right? So they deny it and then use it themselves and then try and point the finger at us as if we're wrong when we're not 100% correct. We're 100 million, billion, trillion percent correct. An angle of elevation or an elevation angle is always a right angle triangle, as so is a depression angle. So here we have the same again. <coughs> here we have a depression angle. There's the object, there's the person. As you can see, the horizontal line uh, stretches to directly above the object, right? Because it has to, right? Otherwise you can't, You can, how are you gonna get the, how, this, is, this is the point. This is where the right angle would be, right here. And for here, for the elevation angle, this is where the right angle would be, right? So. I'm going to move on, right? Yeah, 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 here is here is an angle of elevation and an angle of depression, or a zenith angle, right? Uh, which could be an angle of depression from the S and an angle of elevation from the A. 
but in celestial navigation as i've shown in the past and has been continually denied even though i've shown it from celestial navigation and i've shown diagrams where they're showing it that they are creating a box so this is the person the angle to the celestial body this is the point the gp point below the celestial body and this is the the calculated distance or measured sorry the measured distance between a and that gp point and how they measure it is once they have this right via the horizon at sea using the marine sextant we're going to stick with the marine sextant for the moment um once they have this uh, they then um once they take the angle, they then do dip correction, um, which doesn't matter if you bring the line up to the eye line or bring the vertex down to the sea, makes no difference, it's the same correction. Same amount of correction, no differences based on the observer's height above the uh, water, beneath the boat. That will then, they will then subtract that from 90 um, uh, and then use the zenith angle, right, which would be the remainder, right? And they'll multiply that, right, by 60, right, for the nautical miles. Where did they get nautical miles from? Right, they got it by determining that there was 69.04 horizontal straight statuate miles for one degree of angular change to Polaris. And they found out that same was the same for basically every other celestial body. Right, it was all the same for each one. Right, so that's how they got that. So they needed to know that horizontal distance first in statuate miles before they could determine they could determine that an nautical mile was 1.1508 statuate miles that's what they needed to do they needed to get one degree and then from then on they could then determine divide it by 60 with 69.04 you just divide that by 60 it'll come out about 1.1508 right that is that is how they did that right so this is what is constantly denied by our opposition right so when we move on this is q math right q math now, this is the angle of elevation, horizontal line, line of sight object, right? Angle of elevation formula, right? Now, most of the time, angle of elevations are used uh, for buildings and different things like that, right? <clears throat> right? But when it comes to celestial bodies, you're not going to use them the same way. We don't do that in celestial navigation. They, not we, I don't do it. I'm saying in, when people in celestial navigation, they don't do that, right? But it's still showing right angle triangle. It's an angle of elevation, an elevation angle to a celestial body, right? Now, this will be using the lengths of size and the internal angles, blah, blah, blah. For There's a, two different ways of doing it or whatever, but... <clears throat> But the point is, is that this, if you're using it for a building or something, then you're going to use it uh, with the distance from the building, the angular size of the building, all this kind of stuff, right? So, um, or if it's, you if you know the, the, you know, you're going to need the height, all this kind of stuff, right? Uh, I don't need to go into all that, right? <clears throat> but the point is, is that that's how we deal with terrestrial objects. But with celestial objects, that's not how it works. But let's just go down to angle of elevation versus angle of depression. Let's just read these, right? Angle of elevation. It is formed when an object is placed above the observer, right? Also known as upward angle. The horizontal line, the horizontal line is below the object. Here you go. The line is always below the object. Angle of depression. It is formed when an object is placed uh, below the observer's eye, eye level, also known as downwards angle. The horizontal line is always, uh, sorry, is above the object. It's always above the object. You can't have an angle of elevation or an angle of depression without that. Right, so here are some images, right, right from official sources. Some of them are from QMath, right, right, right angle for an angle of elevation. Now right? there is the right angle, perpendicular distance, object, horizontal line, right. Right angle for an angle of depression, horizontal line, perpendicular distance, right line of sight, object, right. Now, as I said, terrestrially, in terrestrial terms, yeah, they will use a perpendicular distance, <clears throat> but for celestial navigation. This part, this distance is not known, right, and is not important. What's important is the calculation of the, the started with the sixty-nine point oh four horizontal. Excuse me. The started with the sixty-nine point oh four horizontal uh, miles for every one degree of angular change to Polaris, right? Whether you're moving closer to it, north of the equator, or or, or further from it, north of the equator, if you're moving directly north or south, right? There's they calculate. They measured that there was sixty nine point oh four, right, right, uh, uh, horizontal miles for that one degree of change, and that 
that then gave them their, their nautical miles. So all they do in celestial navigation is determine this distance via that. They don't determine the height of Polaris or the height of any other celestial body. It's just an angular change. It's an apparent height. At any for every angle, it's just an apparent height, right? Which I will show now in a minute. But we just move on here. Angle elevation, right? Horizontal line, line of sight, object. Horizontal line directly below the object, right? This is not like the object is over here somewhere and this is your globe horizon nonsense. This is the object with the horizontal line directly below it, right? This, not that you can have, you can't have a horizontal uh, horizon on a globe. It's just nonsense, right? You can't do any of that, right? It, 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 oh. They don't have a horizontal. It, it, you know, it, the whole thing is, is is an absolute mess. But anyway, mathematically, it's it's a horrendous mess. But it doesn't matter, <clears throat> or geometrically. But it doesn't matter. The point is that any object, whether it be a physical object or uh, or whatever the celestial bodies are, the horizontal line for your angle of elevation must be below the object, or the pressure must be above the object. That is what an angle of elevation or depression is. Line of sight, horizontal line. Right angle, observer's eye, object. This is from uh, helpingwithmath.com. So these are not my, like these are just all from uh, these are all from sites. These are not so right angle. It's always a right angle, right? Because normally they do determine the length of the three sides. It's just celestial navigation don't, right? They don't do it. They don't determine the length of the three sides. When you're dealing with celestials, right? You don't. No. Uh, Astronomy might, but that I'll show in a, in a while why that's total nonsense. Um, uh, because they're pre assuming a lot of stuff. So, if you're going to pre assume a lot of stuff as opposed to, um, you know, actually dealing with reality and what you do and don't know, uh, then you know, I can't be helped for that. If people want to do that stuff, you know, that's not my fault. Um, <clears throat> now, I don't know if they, I don't know everything about astronom astronomy, so I don't, can't say for certain that they do constantly use, but I'm pretty sure they do use, they do start uh, determining distances and between objects and from their globe out all this nonsense right <clears throat> but as i said i'll show in a few minutes how that's total rubbish okay here we go angle of elevation and depression right horizontal line directly below right and above both angles that's the only way you can have an angle of, the, of elevation it is impossible to have one any other way that is what it is it's not just two straight lines meeting at a vertex it is always always a right angle triangle so here is Right, this is from boyjuice.com. So horizontal line directly below, below the object. Line of sight, horizontal line directly below the object. Observer's eye, horizontal line directly above the object. Horizontal line directly above the object. Right. Here is another one from I don't know who uh, cloud front. I know some some other side anyway. Showing angle of elevation. Right, height, height, right angle triangle. Now, so the first thing I must do after all this is not just say the celestial navigation don't take the height into account actually show it with citation so let's go through citation so let's start with start with this one okay right so angular a question angular and zenith heights of stars what do you mean pray right question mark answer i mean to say that when one speaks generally of the height of a star one does not mean the true distance from the earth to that star but the angular distance from star to star and as angles do not depend upon the length of their sides uh, the sides of celestial sphere sphere matters not nor do any of the imaginary extended lines and points of the earth such as axis poles meridians parallels etc right so that's just no we there's no height there's no we don't you know it's just an angular distance or an angular height angles they there's no height being uh, being claimed okay so for the purpose of obtaining this distance accurately, the sextant was invented. This instrument measures the height altitude of celestial bodies above the horizon. Our overhead point is 90 degrees above the horizon. Therefore, the distance between a star and our overhead point would be 90 degrees minus the star's altitude. Of course, we aren't really measuring a distance to this, to, uh, in the sky, but an angle. So they're not measuring a distance to the star, just an angle, right? So next one. Okay, <clears throat> the sextant is one of the most important uh, instruments used for, by navigators. It is fundamentally a kind of telescope for measuring the angular height of a celestial body, angular height, such as the, su the sun, a planet, or a star above the horizon. This height is not measured in feet or miles or inches, but in terms of angular degrees, 
right? That's number three, right? Number four, <clears throat> altitude or elevation. These are synonymous for the angular height of an object above the, your horizon or any given uh, at any given moment when a star is on your horizon. So it is either just rising or just setting. Its altitude or elevation is zero. And when it is directly overhead at the zenith, its altitude or elevation is 90 degrees. Keep in mind that <clears throat> this is an angle, not a physical distance. Figure 1.9 1 displays the altitude, the ang altitude angle of a star. So here we have it again, All right? As you can see, zenith, star, right? Horizon, right? The, uh, hori to horizon, right? The point is, is that the horizontal line is always underneath the star, right? Always, right? That's the point. So you have your zenith, you have a, which are your vertical, and your horizontal, right? For the horizon, right? Uh, and you're determining the distance between the observer and the GP point underneath the star. That's what you're actually doing, right? <clears throat> so, and last one then from Smithsonian. A sextant is used to measure the altitude of a celestial body above a horizontal line of reference. The horizontal line of reference. Altitude in this case is a special use of the word describing an angular measure, not a distance in feet above sea level. Right. So I, I'm going to read on. I'm going to read all of this. Right. <clears throat> a mariner can use the horizon as this line of reference, but when an air but when an airplane is above the clouds or flying at night, its navigator can't see the horizon. The bubble sextant solves this problem by, by providing an artificial horizon. It takes its name from an air bubble in a liquid-filled chamber that functions like a carpenter's level, indicating when the sextant is aligned horizontally. When I look through the eyepiece of my sextant, I locate a star and with a drum on the sides of the instrument, like a camera's focus ring, uh, adjust the angle <coughs> of a rotatable prism until the star, uh, star, showing, star showing in the eyepiece is aligned beside the bubble. The prism and drum are geared to circular scales marked off in degrees. From these scales, I read the star's altitude. So this is the point is, is that they're never determining or claiming a height to a celestial body in uh, celestial navigation, right? They're just taking an angle and they're determining a horizontal distance that, as I said earlier, right, was originally determined by them determining how many horizontal statue miles of, right, they would have to travel for one degree of angular change uh, to Polaris, right? So to, to determine what a statue, what a nautical mile was, they needed to use they are needed to be a horizontal, right? That's the way it is. There's no way they needed this mean sea level needed to be a horizontal. More correctly, mean sea level needed to be a horizontal uh, plane. You know, otherwise they wouldn't have been able to do it. So anyone who is claiming that nautical miles have something to do with the globe, they have absolutely nothing to do with the globe. They are purely a flat Earth uh, mile. Right, based off of mean sea level being a horizontal as it needs to be for them to measure 69.04 horizontal miles, statute, horizontal statute miles for one degree of angular change to Polaris. Right, there's no way around it, it is what it is. Reality is reality. Okay, so we'll go on to the next thing, right? So, what is the problem? The problem is this, right? Parallax, right? Now, this is not really parallax, but I just want to use it, right? There is the horizontal line, right? Visible horizon, right? This is, will be their globe, right? This is the observer here, right? Here is the moon or whatever, right? But this is the problem. That must extend out underneath this, right? It doesn't just stop at whatever they want to believe the horizon is, right? It doesn't do that, right? It must then extend out, right? And as you can see, right, this angle here, then what they do is they just remove it. Now, this is wrong because it's shown that the angle here is different from this angle, right? In, right? What they do mathematically is not. They just take this angle, right? And they don't like to admit it, but the horizontal line must go beneath the celestial body, that would making a right angle triangle. And that right angle triangle then is moved down to their celestial horizon, or sorry, to their uh, equatorial plane, right? But obviously because there's only 3,959 miles Right from their center point, right, uh, calculated for a, a calculation of 3,959 miles from their center point to, to their surface, out, to the outer surface of their globe, right, they must then extend and they do this all the time, all the time, right, this is the backbone of astronomy, more or less, 
they are constantly extending the equatorial plane right at right at equinox right out into the celestial horizon now you don't need to have equinox for celestial navigation but <clears throat> when you're doing this uh, in astronomy they're always extending it they're always placing everything at equinox and extending this celestial plane out into the celestial horizon right this is the thing so they're first trying to claim that they're not using a right angle triangle and then they're actually using right a right angle triangle whether they like it or not they want to claim that they're measuring this arc length here right or that, sorry this they're measuring an arc length that's what they want to, of this this to this but they have absolutely no basis for this because all they're doing is a mathematical mathematical what would you call it a mockery is all it is mathematical mockery right geometric mockery, mockery is all it is that's all it is a mockery um so this is what the, they don't want to admit it but they're always extending their uh their uh equatorial plane out into the celestial plane right the celestial horizon what's that it's just this it's not down here it's up here that's all it is right it just happens that the that the earth is not a globe it's a big horizontal plane right if we use just mean sea level that we use we, we take all elevations above and below that horizontal plane right that's what we do and this arc length here isn't an arc length it's a straight distance that's what it is so technically this arc length here would be this line here and that celestial body would be above here and the right angle would be I mean here there that's where it would be right if you're going to measure this arc length then it would actually be this length horizontal length that you've measured here not that this is really horizontal if it's on a globe but, but we will tolerate it for a moment not that we, we we won't tolerate it it's not a, it won't be horizontal if they're trying to mathematically place it on a globe it can't be the horizontal doesn't exist in their paradigm if there is no reference for it no tangent plane could be horizontal they also don't have vertical because they don't have horizontal and their verticals are claimed to, to diverge which verticals don't they're always parallel horizontals are always parallel no way around that that's just the way it is they're wrong we're right so next one same nonsense again doing the same kind of thing but as you can see right the celestial horizon is used right here is their geodal horizon nonsense and and the celestial body above it's just the horizon right uh, <coughs> right above the horizon that's all it is it's a measurement of uh, this distance from the observer to the point beneath the celestial body that's all it is right so i'm going to move on just because that you, you get the gist right so here we have parallax hmm. that's interesting huh parallax because when they deny using uh right angle triangles for celestial bodies and no no we don't do any of that yet when they're doing parallax they're placing the angle at the at the at their equatorial plane they're extending it out into the celestial plane and they're making a right angle in the center of their sun to right and then six months later they're doing the same thing here over here for a star so that's two right angle triangles i thought you i thought they, i thought nobody uses them i thought no 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 there's no there's just an angle no there's no right angle triangles no yet you're using them all the time for parallax non-stop constantly using them now what they're really doing is there is no globe earth or sun what they're really doing is <coughs> they're doing this and then trying to claim right that they're orbiting the sun and you know, blah 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 saying about six months later the sun is a different place and we're three million miles blah 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 and they just just load them out in in the day what they're actually doing it's just taking this angle here right then six months later taking the same angle from a different place the, the and then what they're doing is with those two angles they're just adding the or value that's all they're doing right or they're pre-assuming the or value first and they just those two angles will have a chord line um <clears throat> sorry We'll have a chord line right so those two angles will have a chord line uh used basically as their the base or whatever it's just nonsense right the equatorial plane will be the chord line whatever but they, they can when they're doing with the moon when they're doing this with the moon <clears throat> they're actually using uh they'll actually use uh, uh, uh like so if the moon is here right one person is here let's say here and their person is here they'll take two angles and then they'll they'll add in the or value and that horizontal baseline they use will get shorter and that will become a chord length through the through a circle or sphere it's just a lot of nonsense right in reality this this part here this is all that's happening right 
none of this other nonsense. But people can mathematically believe, mathematically believe all kinds of rubbish. They, they believe all kinds of rubbish in the world. So I, I suppose that's not a stretch, is it? So let's move on. <clears throat> so here, there we are, just using right angles. That's what they use. They're trying to claim, oh, no, no right angles, but they're always using them. They can't stop using them. They're constantly using them, constantly extending out into the celestial planes. No end of nonsense, right? Here are we again. See, 1AU, we're going to deal with this in a minute. The right angle at the, at the EU. So, the, so they are using right angles, it seems. So there is right angles, but there's a celestial body. Uh, but they're, ex but they're, they're, they're doing, this is going on in the sky where they're trying to make right angles with the sun. It's nonsense, but it's still using right angles. But as I said, when they do it with the moon, when they're doing this with the moon, they're using uh, basically a, a core length straight through the sphere. Uh, or or they often do that with you know with two people with two people uh, they can do it with different, two different locations then add in the or value which makes their or their shared horizontal baseline an arc length it's absolute nonsense but what can you do people are going to do stupid things so this is an interesting one because if we took this let's just say and we put it into celestial navigation what would it be that would be the observer this would be the star and what they're calling the sun here now i know it's not that's not what they're, what they're doing but what they're calling the sun here would be the gp point of a celestial body but they're claiming no that right angle triangle doesn't exist yet they're using it constantly when they need to do parallax aren't they they're constantly needing it for their parallax calculations you know so if it doesn't exist and it's not powerful you don't use that with the celestial bodies no 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 then how come you're using it you'd never stop using it. it's constantly being used but you just won't admit that you're happening on the surface of Earth. You have to bring it to the center of some pre-assumed heap of nonsense that's a back engineering from flat Earth elevation angles to Polaris. The, and uh, with distances, the, the horizontal distances that were determined from statute miles, which are straight line, straight line horizontals uh, first. What can you do? Here we are again, same again, right angle, star, blah, blah, blah. Same nonsense again. This is just basically like a, a, a circle, like the last one. Just a, like a circle of equal altitude on the surface of mean sea level, basically. Uh, of our surface of our, basically. <clears throat> right, but they want it, but they, but it's okay for them to use these big massive circles um, with their with their heliocentric heap of nonsense here that I'm going to destroy in a minute. Um, um, that I've already destroyed it, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to further destroy it. Um, but that's it's okay for them to use it. But it's not okay for them to admit that it's been used in celestial navigation, even though I've just proven that it is. Um, here is a great one, right? Right? Here is a great one because it shows you know this is exactly what you know, a angle to celestial body, GP point, blah blah blah. But no, this is actually the globe out the two different times of the year and the sun and I mean the right angle to the sun. And oh they have a distance, one AU. Hmm, I wonder where they got that from. Right? Here we are again, this would be like two different boats. If the sun here in this diagram was just a GP point, right? This is the star, celestial body, right? Right an angle, right angle triangle, right below at the GP point of the celestial body. That's where the right angle triangle, that's where the right angle of the right angle triangle is. Now, obviously, there's another right angle directly above uh, directly above the observer um, that they're going to be taking a zenith uh, the, when they get the zenith angle off of the, the subtraction of the angle of elevation. But the point is, is <clears throat> in their, they deny the use of the, these right angle triangles with celestial bodies. But they are fine about it when, those right, when that right angle of that ends up at their sun. Hmm, that's interesting, you, 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 and it's coming from the, they're extending it that, that horizontal baseline from well, it's not really horizontal, but in reality, it's a horizontal, that, and they're going to then make their equatorial plane horizontal. And you know, I suppose space time is a horizontal as well, you know, but it doesn't matter because, <clears throat> because in the end of the day, they're using right angle triangles for celestial bodies, yet they want to tell us flat earthers that you you can't use them no one uses them in celestial navigation even though i've just shown exactly what it's you know it, we've shown it before what these angle of elevations are um you know i've just shown how there's no height claimed with these for celestial navigation or you're interested in the horizontal distance which they determine by statute of miles you know it, it's all nonsense that you know what can you do people are going to deny and believe whatever they want to believe so let's just work off this one au hmm, where, where did they come up with that distance now that's an interesting one, right? One AU, right? So I'm going to put this in the 
uh, this is from NASA. This is this is a special. Um, I put this in the description. This is a special begging the question PDF. So you can beg a, the question along with NASA, right? So <clears throat> how did they determine this? I'm going to go through how they determined it. Then I'm going to go show this and some of the other images I have, right? So <clears throat> the nine steps. Let's bring it down a bit. The nine steps of delusion. Right. This is the globe's nine steps of delusion for how you get distance to the uh, sun. Step one, pre-assume that you live on a globe earth with a radius of 3,959 statute miles. Step two, pre-assume that Venus is also a spherical planet of equal size, equal or close enough size. Right. Step three, pre-assume that the sun is a big sphere of gas and plasma in a vacuum. Step four, compare the angular size of Venus with the angular size of the sun during Venus's transit of the sun. Step five, determine via angular size differential in accordance with your previous pre-assumptions about the Earth, Venus, and the Sun, that Venus is a, per uh, is a particular distance from a globe Earth via its angular size, and that therefore the Sun is a particular distance from the globe Earth, globe Earth, sorry, globe Earth via its angular size. Step six, claim that you know the distance to the Sun because you know the distance to Venus, and that you know the distance to Venus because you know the distance to the Sun, circular reasoning. Step seven, claim that you know all this because you pre-assume that the Earth is a globe with an unmeasured radius of 3,959 statute miles. Step, step eight, ignore the fact that you needed to make up a size for Venus for you to complete your ad hoc calculations. And step nine, most important step, really, really, really ignore the fact that you need to use angular sizes for your calculations, even though angular size is a function of perspective, and perspective is not accounted for in global mathematics, as those maths are orthographic only, even though perspective is actually the thing that was hijacked and back-engineered to calculate a global into existence to begin with. Step nine is the most important step. Now, that means that they just made up a size to Venus, uh, after pre-assuming the Earth was a globe, after making go pre-assuming the Earth was a globe, based off, ba of the, off the back engineering of flat Earth elevation angles to Polaris, um, <clears throat> and then they just made up, the, they just determined, it was actually Christian Hugens, I think, they said, Venus is the same size, is the same size planet as globe Earth is. Right? It's the same size. So then they just use the angular size of Venus and its transit across the sun. There's, it's all in here. You can see there's Venus here. Let's go down and see if I can show you. Right, there's Venus, right? More transit across the sun nonsense. Uh, this is a pretty, right there you are, Venus transiting across the sun. So they determined that this here is the same size as a globe out that they're claiming to be on. And so, based off its angular size, something that doesn't exist in globe mathematics, because the perspective doesn't exist in the subject, um, to make the globe, um, they, they claim that this here is the same size as the globe out, and based off its angular size, that the, and the angular size of the sun, the average angular size of the sun, that if you go by averages, then it, it'll give you a distance between the globe out, calculated distance, and the sun, right? Based off of a pre-assumed what they pre-assume this is, and they pre-assume an angular so, uh, angular size of it, or they pre-assume its size to use its angular size because they pre-assumed there was a globe because they back calculated from a flat or, from flat Earth elevation angles to Polaris, blah blah blah. Right. So let's go by that logic. Right. So here is an airplane. This is the Venus's transit in front of the sun. Here is an airplane. So we know where that airplane is. At that time, it can be proven, right? So it can be shown that via the angular size of that airplane, if we know the actual uh, airplane itself, it's a Boeing 777 or, you know, 787, whatever it is, right? <clears throat> you can determine that this airplane is that X far away. That would make Venus, well, that would make Venus a bit different in size in comparison to what they need it to be. Um, and the sun too. But I don't know. Maybe this won't work. But we'll try it with another one. <clears throat> so maybe if we do it this way, and we'll take this plane, and this in front of the transit, you know, with the transit of Venus, and we use angular sizes then. But that would mean that the plane. Yeah. But see, the thing is that we know the size of this plane. We can measure it. We've made these things. People, humans, make these planes. We know the size of them. So we can we can prove that its angular size matches its actual size. 
but we don't have any actual sites for this thing up here. So technically, I could take this plane, or this plane, or this plane, or this plane, and I could use any of these and claim any of these, right, and do the same type of calculation that they did and come up with some ad hoc size to Venus and the Sun. I can do that. Determining based off its angular size, I can go down that road that they went down and make up any amount of rubbish because that's all they did. So when they, let me just go back here a sec, when they show, right, this 1AU and they put this right angle at the Sun, where do they get that distance from? Circular reasoning, that's where they got that distance from. And then they have the cheek to use right angles that are, that are, that are extending out from their, 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 their equatorial plane into, into the celestial plane. Right? They have the cheek to use them there, but then deny, completely deny, right, that, that those angles, right, that those elevation angles are right angle triangles when it comes to celestial navigation. I mean, the neck of some of these people is phenomenal. They have absolutely zero evidence for any of their claims, yet they have the cheek to try and say that they're not using right angle triangles for their... <coughs> they're not using right angle triangles where, uh, um, uh, in celestial navigation. Yet, yet, they'll be using them here. That's a right angle. That's going to be a right angle triangle. You know what I mean? They're going to be using them there. They're always using right angle triangles. That's what an angle of ele elevation is, as is shown one more time by Kuma. Angle of elevation. It is formed when an object is placed above the observer, also known as upwards angle. The horizontal line is below the object. End of story. Thanks for watching.